today I am in Florence, Italy, and I am going to visit the shop of Sarah Anheim. She has this very cool jewelry design, um, and I'm going to explain her process a little bit and the beautiful jewelry that she has. For all of you listening on the podcast, I know you can't see this, but we'll explain a little bit about her process. And of course, the name of the podcast is, hold on, Idea, oh, that's the name of my book. Podcast is uh, Invent Yourself. So although we talk about inventing things on your own, we also want to talk about inventing the life that you want. And defining success is doing something that you love. So I'm going to introduce you to Sarah. This is Sarah. Hello. Sarah Anheim. Am right. Oh dang. That's it's okay. Right. It's all right. It's close enough. All right. Enough. What she said. <laughs> and you have some beautiful earrings on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're looking very good, girl. <laughs> thank you. So this is your shop in Florence, Italy. It is. I love it. it it's is. adorable. Thank you. Uh, I walked down here from the Le Cure. Brava. Uh, <laughs> finally said it right. And it's um, not worth me putting any makeup on because it will roll right off. Thank you. Here I am in my linen. <laughs> Okay. You look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> I am excited to come see you. Thank you for opening your shop today. Well, thank you. For I coming. learned about you from my friend Victoria, who I met at a writer retreat. Funny how life works. Everything comes around <laughs> in one circle. So tell me, Sarah, how long have you been in Florence? Been in Florence since 2000, so almost 20 years. Well, sounds like you're staying, staying for a while. Staying for a while, I think. And where were you from? So I am from Los Angeles by way of New York. Um, I was actually born in New York, um, but we moved to California when I was pretty young, so I consider myself to be from California. And how did you get into the jewelry business? Um, jewelry kind of came after my art studies. I actually studied fine arts, painting, and sculpture. Same here. All right. See? Um, never know what can happen with, uh, with that kind of stuff, right? Everybody ends up, Doing and this is what I'm trying to tell my audience. I have young people saying, how am I supposed to know what to do when I'm 18? I said, you don't. You don't. No. You Absolutely don't. Not. Nobody knows what they're doing. You don't know what you're doing next week, exactly. Sarah, right? <laughs> so, so exactly. but, but what intrigues me about you is that you took the leap and here you yeah. are. Yeah, and I think, that's, I think that's one of the most important things is not having a set plan, having an idea, of course, of what you like and what you enjoy doing but not to be so stuck on that plan that it has to be a certain way. Yes. And opening yourself up to the options or possibilities that are presented in front of you and, and seeing what happens. Spoken like a true artist. <laughs> I mean, some people can't, some people are very black and white. Yeah. Um, I have relatives who are very black and white and they don't understand me. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm kind of gray. I mean, I. I think you kind of have to be when yeah. you're when you're a creative person yeah. when you're you have to be open to it all. Up, yeah, with different ideas. Um, and you know, jewelry is not what I set out to do. It was always kind of it was always part of my upbringing. My mother and my aunt are very stylish. Really? And, yes. Do tell. Yes. In, yeah. in New York. Well, my aunt kind of lived her heyday in the 1950s in New York, and that was the time of. You had to have everything matching, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. You had to have the choker that matched the bracelet, that matched the pin, that had the hat, that had the gloves, that had the oh shoes. And gosh, when I was a little girl, I got to play in her closet. And she would take all of these things out for me and my sister, and we'd play with them. And See, and it starts young. Yeah, it really yes. does. Yeah. I was one of, I'm one of three daughters. I'm gonna put my tripod down, people, hold yeah. on. One of three daughters, so my, my dad had no boys. Um, but lucky, lucky for me, I actually, um, I wound up, let's go like this. Okay. I guess we can. Do all you right. Wanna, hold on. Let's see. No, we'll, I'm all right. Well, well it's always Do on you your dad. That's all. like up here on that? Well, it's, uh, let's see. Yeah. For those of you listening to the podcast, we're just trying to figure out a place to put this tripod. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not a professional. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. All right. So, as I was saying, the my father had a workshop, and I started making things in the workshop. I loved it, and then became the inventor. So, right, and that's that's really where where it kind of began for me too was having a mother who was always making things. Not only was she 
very stylish, but she was also always making things. Um, she would do gingerbread houses at Christmas time, and they'd be all hand decorated with candies and icing. Um, she would wrap presents that were gorgeous and beautiful with little sequins glued onto them and perfect little bows. So how could you not be creative? And then she started working for a sticker and, and uh, wrapping paper company when I was about eight years old. So she would bring home stickers cool. and rubber stamps and paper. Wow. And so she was always making things wow. with them. And we just had shelves in the garage full of stuff. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, it was amazing. Wow. <laughs> so can you explain the process of your jewelry a little bit uh, without getting yeah. to, giving too much away? Let me show your work table okay. right here. Yeah. So and, I'm working uh, on I'm working on a couple of different things, and that's usually what happens. Um, I never work on one thing from start to finish. Um, I'm usually doing a few different things at once. Um, so I tend to make a lot of flowers or a lot of pieces, and I might have an idea of what I want that to look like when I start the process, but I never sketch, I never do any drawings, I just start working with the clay. And for me, this, um, so the, the great thing about polymer clay is that until it's fired, nothing is permanent. So you can make changes to it even uh, up until it's been fired. Once it's fired, it'll never change shape or color. But I tend to sketch that way. So I'll make the flowers, and I'll make the leaves and the pieces, and then I'll start forming them and putting them together here on my table um, and see you know, if that concept or if that idea is gonna work out. Um, if, it, if I'm happy with it, then it goes into the oven. Um, it gets fired, it hardens. Um, and, and then- And what, wait, where's your oven? Yeah, is right it? here. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> Just I love this it. Little, tiny it's guy. literally an oven. Yep. See what you can do at, at home, yeah. people. Yeah. And uh, I mean, like, you guys, if you follow my stuff, know that I I was heat testing one of my products, the baby mirror, that became worldwide. Um, five patents later, oh my God. I heat tested it in my toaster oven, and I threw it in the freezer to see how cold it could get. Uh -huh. And the, people think that you have to have these uh, independent lab tests. So, it's beautiful. Thank you for showing us that. Oh, look and, at that. You know, this is this is the material I use right here. I use two different kinds. I mean, I'm a I prefer Fimo. It's the brand name. Oh, I but love the color in that. Yeah, no, it comes in amazing colors, amazing colors, and you can mix them together like tubes of paint. So you know, you can just think of them like that, and you can make your own colors out of what they what they already give you. These are pure pigments. The professionals are pure pigments, um, and. Um, it's just, it's a really versatile material, and you don't need a lot. Um, so once it's fired, yeah. it becomes uh, hardened, and then you can... Well, it depends on its thickness. Um, this is a really thin piece, and you can see that it's still a little bit flexible. Oh, I love it. So it has some movement to it, but if you do, if I have, you know, a thicker piece like that, no, it's not going to be flexible. Um, but it's still, it's it's a pretty, it's a pretty sturdy material. Right, and so, so that lasts forever? It lasts forever, never, never change shape or color. Oh, yeah. that'd be a nice <laughs> So that's a pendant, that, you're actually holding it upside down. Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. It'll go like that, it'll go. have a tassel attached to the end and uh, be on oh, that long, uh, a long Like the bandaid on my thumb, I'm an inventor. <laughs> yes, so. I've been uh, chipping away at some things, a prototype. This is All beautiful. Right. Yeah, I love the colors. Yeah, there's a couple. Your color sense is amazing. I love color, yeah. and I've always liked to kind of experiment and put together unexpected color combinations and see what happens. I love and it. Just you know, just kind of play around. And I just want to tell the viewers that those um, gold uh, are those called flirt? Um, I call them leaves. They are leaves, but. They were just on someone's neck. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I actually recently did um, a big necklace. So there was lots and lots of these. It was gorgeous. Um, going all yeah. the way around the neck. And you can see it on my website if you'd like. Um, and uh, a, for a show called A Dream of Italy. Um, and uh, Kathy McCabe, the host, uh, she goes around to different parts of Italy. She talks to people who live in Italy, have made lives in Italy. Um, her most recent one was Brahma Sole, which is Frances Mays, the author of Under the Tuscan Sun. Of course. Sun. And uh, yes, so she's wearing my necklace in her interview with I know, I saw her, it's beautiful. Well, and um, and she she picked out a good one for that, yeah, for that piece. Yeah, it was perfect, it was perfect. So tell me, do you think you'll keep doing this or do you just never know? Mm -hmm. Well, I never say never. Yeah. You know, um, I do think of myself, yes, as a, an artist, as a creator, but I also think of myself as an entrepreneur at the same time. Um, so I try and make sure that I keep things very 
you know, business oriented. Of course, there's a personal attachment to it. I'm passionate about it, but at the same time, it's business. Um, so if something comes up, then you know, there's a, another opportunity. You never know what could happen. That's right, and um, it's kind of unique. Well, some people just want to be the idea people, mm -hmm. and they want other to people. hand it off to other people and say, "Oh, I'll give you a cut." And I hear that all the time yeah. with inventions and products, and I'm like. No, 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 that's not how it works. <laughs> now, if you're not an entrepreneur, you can hire people to help you with that, but you're lucky that you have both skill sets. And uh, yeah. it's been something, of course, it doesn't, it, it doesn't come immediately. You know, those are things that over time, in the, very, in the beginning of all of this, if somebody was interested in what I, would, what I was doing, great, here you go, you know, how much do you want to pay me for it here? Now, no. <laughs> Good no. for you. Because, you know, a lot of people never get to that next stage. And they keep giving it away. Exactly. And then it becomes less valuable, doesn't it? Of course. I mean... And if you're going to set a price on something, then what's... Why, why right. are you even asking exactly. for money in the first place? And, so. and it, it requires... It, it's very unique. Um, it's Thank nothing you. that you're going to see in any other stores. And I love it. And I think I'm going to grab a pair of earrings while I'm here. My sister is coming in to Italy um, tomorrow. I thought it was today. Okay. She's in Rome, but she'll be by, I'm sure. Great, um, I'd love to meet her. And thank you for this interview. Oh, I'm just pleasure. trying to let people know, not even just young people, people of any mm -hmm. age, that they should try this mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying it's easy. You know it's not it's easy. Not. And, you know, and it's day and night and day and night. Yeah. And it, and it takes time, and that's one of the things I try and make sure that I tell the young students and the interns that I'm working with is, um, it's like any other career. You don't start at the top. You have to work your way up. You have to prove yourself. You have to, mm -hmm. you know, build an audience. You have to, you know, build your skills, and you have to work your way up to that much higher level. And a lot of people give up because they want immediate success. And I'm here to tell you that time goes fast. I never <laughs> thought I'd be sitting here right at this age doing this. And uh, nor did I think I would be an inventor, nor did I think I was going to have children, you know, nor did I think I was right. blah, 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 it goes right, on and course. on. Uh, but it's a beautiful thing, it's just, uh, it's an exciting thing that just unfolds yeah. if you can look at the positive side and if you have the support. Because yes, a lot of people say, you know, my parents want me to go to law school, I just met a lawyer on this trip uh, who's not happy with being where she's at. So I said, you know, you can please your parents or other people, mm -hmm. but you need to please yourself. Absolutely. And they may be mad for a while, but are upset, but they'll always support you. And if they don't, that's not your problem. You know, you gotta make your own life and be happy. So I wanna thank you for this. I, I don't know if we touched upon everything I should. That's Just, I hope I gave you some, uh, where can my followers uh, find, find your stuff? Um, so they can find me on my website, which is wwwsarah amrine uh, that's A-M-R-H-E-I-N, as in Nancy. Um, and you can use that name in Google. You can go on Instagram, uh, type in that name, and you'll find me there, uh, Facebook. I love that you're branding your name, too. That means you can go off into anything. Like you're not Sarah the, the jewelry lady or no, Sarah no. the earring lady. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. And so that's where you can find her. I will put a link also uh, at the bottom of this episode. And for people that are watching the video, uh, if you want to get on the podcast on the Anchor app, you can actually call in questions and I can put your voice on a Q&A later and maybe we'll get back with Sarah to answer some questions if you have any specific questions or, or if you just want to hear your voice on a podcast. <laughs> uh, this is all an experiment, people. Love I'm it. holding a camera in each hand and uh, <laughs> I didn't even get on the camera today. Uh, there she is. <laughs> um, but I do want to pick out Love some it. earrings. So for the podcast people, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, and for the video, I'll show you some earrings. Bye for now. So fun. That's fun. Okay, so right. we're going so, over to the, let's go going going over over to the board. All right. So <laughs> I have been in here a couple of times, and my eyes went right <laughs> to these beautiful earrings. Yeah. Now... Because I got my hair cut and earrings really show up, I'm gonna show you what these look like. Maybe you should get those off there. Now, 
Sarah has doubled the price because I was in the other day. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. May I? <laughs> yes. We did wash these yeah, earlier. Me, well, I we, do, oh, all right. Do it again for you. Let oh, me just do it just again. Uh, I don't think anyone else has tried them on since that's, you. But I'm fine. Let's just I'm so sure. resistant at this point. <laughs> Bellissimo. <laughs> right? Does that mean that? Yeah. yeah. Grazie. What does prego mean? Prego means many things. I um, thought it meant that you're welcome. It does. But then people keep saying prego. It okay. does. It means you're welcome, but it also means come on in. It not also means help yourself. Uh, uh, I, I don't know the back means, end, but I mean, I'll do it for Oh, there. Look at that lovely hairdo, people. Going to bed with the wet hair. I, um, your hair is fabulous. I wish I'm not vain anymore. I just go. Oh, thank you. There you go. Uh, oh, look. But see, I don't need this on. <laughs> And they okay, got the little bit of green to match your fabulous glasses. Look at that. I look like I'm wearing a tablecloth. It looks, it's great. Um, I, I'm going to have to get these, I think, yeah. I, I think because, they're fabulous on you. Because I've been thinking about them well, all day and night. You know what they say. <laughs> if you're thinking about it, then that means they're meant okay. to be yours. Look. Oh, I'm out the window. <laughs> How do you do that? You touch it? Oh my um, gosh. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I've been out of the loop a little bit. I don't know where those are. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where that Well, we can go in the mirror. Anyways, <laughs> there we are. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure.